What's going on guys, Cubologist here today with my first episode in my new series called Puzzle Spotlight. So what this is going to be is just a weekly series of some puzzle, preferably non-WCA, but it might end up being WCA if there's something interesting, that I'm going to just show off, I'm going to sit down and talk about, maybe unbox, maybe give away, who knows what's going to happen, but it's going to be easy to keep up with because I'm really going to enjoy doing this. I'm doing a lot of non-WCA stuff here recently, so it's going to be exciting to get into. But with no further ado, let's take a look at the first puzzle. Now, I really like this company. I don't really know about the puzzle or not yet, but we'll talk about that. But I really like the company because they've been sponsoring cube competitions, and that's how I've got this. And it is the Cubix 2. So if you guys aren't familiar with this puzzle, it's just a 3x3 basically. It solves like a 3x3, but the colors go by layers, as you can see there. And it comes with these two little plastic balls that you put in here, and if it goes all the way through the puzzle to the other side, that means it's solved. So that means that it might have a couple different solved states, like if you replace this piece with this piece and stuff like that, it probably has some different solved states. But let's take a look at this. Fortunately, I've already got one that I opened. Like I said, I've got two. And let's look at this. First off, let's see how it's built. It's just a typical, like an older Rubik's Cube, like a ghost hand or something. It's just your typical core with screws in the center caps and your pieces are pretty squared off. This is an edge and this is a corner. So yeah, it looks like one of the older Rubik's Cubes, but still it's good enough. It just needs some lube if you plan on getting one. And just a piece of advice, if you do end up getting one, don't take it apart because that was pretty miserable. Now my first concern with this puzzle are these two little plastic balls. Now I appreciate that they give you these because this is kind of like a shape modded maze cube, like the sticker mod you can get that's a maze cube, but this is just made out of shapes. And how you test that you've solved it is you put this in, let's see if I can do this. And then when it comes out the other side, you know that you've got it solved, but you don't really need that. I mean, you can trace and see if you've actually solved this puzzle. So these are unnecessary and I feel like I'm gonna lose them, but it's still kind of gimmicky and it, it makes it pretty cool, I guess. So now let's talk about the solve of this puzzle. I've solved it probably five or six times. It basically solves like a really easy three by three super cube, if you're familiar with that puzzle. And the way, I, and the reason I say pretty easy is because You've got one center here that doesn't have an orientation. The other ones are pretty simple. You can see that all of the different layer connections happen right here on one side, so you can keep that in mind. These three edges are interchangeable, so you don't have to worry about that, as long as this one's placed and oriented correctly, as well as these three corners. Now, the easiest way I've found to solve this is to save this layer for your last layer because the center doesn't have an orientation, you can pretty much just do simple algorithms to fix this. So now let's do a quick scramble just to show you what it looks like. Now, turning on this puzzle is pretty stiff, but just like the old Rubik's Cubes, it does get a little bit better, but corner cutting is non-existent, you know, just like a Rubik's Cube. It honestly doesn't even cut that much. Well, maybe I lied. <sighs> With some force, I guess but it's not something that you're gonna be solving fast. It's something you're gonna be solving pretty slow. But let's do a solve here possibly, and I'll show you how I figured out to solve this. All right, so let's take a look here. I'll show you my initial thoughts on this puzzle. Whenever I first solved it, I started with this side as my bottom side, which was a horrible idea because this doesn't have any orientation. So like I said, save this for last and it helps out a lot. But what we're gonna be doing is basically solving it just like a three by three super cube. So let's take a look here. It looks like the blue is gonna be on bottom. So what we wanna do is put these edges in like that and two of the edges that connect to them perpendicular right there. So it looks like here's one. Let's see if it's incorrectly. Nope. So what we wanna do is something like that. Now you can see this goes in across and over. This edge is incorrectly. So let's put this one down. 
And now we don't have to worry about the orientation of this because the edges are around it correctly. So we're not gonna have to swap it. You know how you can swap two 90 degrees opposite direction or one 180 degrees. We don't have to worry about any of that. So now we'll start putting in corners. Let's see here. That one's in okay. We've gotta have one flipped to where the puzzle, you can actually place the ball, right? So let's see here. Nope. So we want the one that you place the ball right there. And I think it's this one. The ones that are actually turned away from the puzzle, like to put the ball in or to transfer layers, always have this sharp side on it. So that's something to keep an eye out for. So let's take this out, put it there. And now we need an elbow piece here. Like I said, turning is not the best on this. And there's that one, just one more right there. We'll get it oriented correctly, hopefully. And the first layer is not done. Oh goodness, what have we done here? All right, so this is gonna be where it actually goes up into the next layer. So what we're gonna do is just do sexy move until it works itself out, just like that, and then we're good to go. So then let's take a look at this red layer, the edges here. So if it's coming up on a corner piece, this one is definitely gonna to have to be facing up like that. So it needs to turn 90 degrees counterclockwise. So we'll bring the blue up and hide it over here. One turn, 90 degrees counterclockwise, put the blue back down and we're set up. Now the rest of the, oh, this one's not fixed either. So bring the blue pieces up, hide them, turn that 90 degrees, turn that back down and we're set up again. So now what I do is I typically use beginner's algorithms to place these into here. So let's see, will that one fit? Yes. So do the beginner's algorithm to place that edge in and we're set. Now this one to here, same algorithm. And the same algorithm again. But obviously I have messed up this edge piece and this edge piece need to swap. So we'll take this one out. Put that blue corner back in. And then we will put this one in. It need, This piece needs to match up with that. So that wouldn't work, but that would. So beginner's algorithm. That works. And then we need to put this one in here like that. And the first two layers are done. Looks like we're golden. All right, now let's look at this last layer. What are we gonna do here? What are we going to do? First off, what we need to take a look at is edge orientation. And as you can see, these don't really have an orientation. Whichever way they're in, they're gonna work. But we need to worry about this one. So I will just do F sexy, F prime, and then we're set up. So the way this is gonna work is, it looks like it's gonna come out, go all the way around, and then come out the top there. So let's see here. Now I think that all these corners are in the correct position because you can see by the orientation that this is the only one that's gonna let the ball come out it'll spout up. So what I do is just assume that they're all permuted correctly. R prime, D prime, R, D until it's fixed. Then just rotate between them. And then it looks like we are totally solved. So now we can do so now we can do the kind of pointless test of solving the ball here. And we're solved. 
But I thought this was something fun just to start with, just to show you guys this puzzle. I'm a fan of the brand just because they support Cuban competitions. But if you guys watch this whole video, because I think it's kind of long, I want to give you some type of reward. So if you want one of these puzzles, just leave a comment down in the description. And in next week's puzzle spotlight, I'll actually be giving this one away. I'll pick a comment. I don't know if it's going to be random or just a comment that I like, but that's up to me, right? My video. But I really appreciate you guys watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. I hope you enjoy this new series because I'm going to have a blast with it. So as always, guys, you'll hear from me really soon. Thanks for watching and later. Just here, and today I've got the second part in my Diane 2x2 comparison series. As you guys know, in the first one, I unboxed these two puzzles. This is the stickered and the stickerless new plastic Diane 2x2. But since then, I have gotten these. As you can tell by the screws inside of them, these are the original plastic or old plastic Diane 2x2s. One of them came from somebody who doesn't really make videos, but the other one came from Cubing with Mikai. So uh, 